Okay, I'll take back about what I said about the DJI Action 2. This is modular. While it can pretty much stack up against every other action cam out there for like image quality, the Insta360 ONE RS seems to represent something much more than that. With 6K resolutions, a half inch 48 megapixel interchangeable lens, and it doesn't overheat. My question is, why wasn't I introduced to this earlier? So I think at this point, everyone's going to compare it to the GoPro, but I'll save you the semantics of comparing it to another action cam and just dive into how this improves from the previous version, which is the One R. After all, why compare yourself to others? But for those who aren't familiar with Insta360 and their action cam lineups, I'll leave a link to them in the description below so you can check them out. Okay, so we're gonna try and see how it looks like indoors because we already had some footage from doing it outdoors. And yeah, trying to see how it functions as a low light camera. I mean, a lot of action cams don't work well in low light. So let's put this to the test. What I have right now with me is the One RS with the new half inch 48 megapixel sensor that ranges up to 6400 ISO. 6K widescreen mode for high res 2.35 by one videos, active HDR modes, a longer battery base, which says it does about 21% longer than the One R, with an all-new core for improved in-camera flow state stabilization, improved mics, 50% faster Wi-Fi transfers, as well as an instant zoom and quick menu feature for improved accessibility. It functions basically the same as the One R, of course, by simply swapping out the lens of choice you have, like the one I have here in the Twin Edition, which consists of the 4K boost lens equivalent to 2.4 16mm, or the f2.0 360 lens and it snaps onto the battery based like here have you used the 360 before uh i've used the one x2 but not not really that into depth but no you haven't tried the one uh the one the RS. one the one rs no i haven't tried the one rs so it's not recording yet right Mm -hmm. Press record when I'm ready, right? Yes. Alright, cool. If you don't remember, Arwin, he was the same dude in the DJI uh, OM5 video, so check that out. Arwin, you ready? Yep, here we go. See ya. Out of the box, you get the camera modules itself, a USB-C connector, a universal quarter inch thread mount, some nice Insta360 stickers, a microfiber cloth, a silicone cover for the 360 lens, and the newly designed mounting bracket, which somehow plays a factor for heat dissipation and a built-in wind cover for clearer audio. So basically it does 4K 60 and the 6K widescreen mode up to 24 frames per second, 2.7K and 100 frames and 200 frames at 1080p. All of which does about 100 megabits per second. There's also internal color profiles to choose from between standard, uh, vivid and log and even photo captures that support RAW and JPEG formats. I don't think I'll be taking too much photos because I don't really take photos with a action cam. It's meant to do video work. And like the stuff that I've been testing mostly is for how it actually works as an action cam. For the 42 megapixel uh, lens, I would say it does perform slightly better than a GoPro, especially indoors. At least that's from uh, what I can notice on the phone screens, but I've yet to see it on the big screen, which we will get to in the later part of the video. So, yeah, stick around for that. Okay, I'm gonna do this in 6K widescreen. So, at the same time, give you a, a feel of how the mics work. There is a mic adapter available on the Insta360 web um, or app, and it costs $23, $24, so that's about 100 ringgit. And yeah, you can attach it to a shotgun mic or maybe even a lavalier. 
and that will help uh, in terms of having speech driven content like I am right now but I'm assuming like the improvements by adding a wind deflector wind uh, dead cat I guess they'll be calling that yeah it does improve just a bit of um, sound isolation but I am you can't run away from actual wind when you're riding a bike so it does have a bit of improvement and so far I've not experienced it overheating and to me that's a big win already because the DJI Action 2 had a lot of overheating issues to the point where I couldn't even use the camera anymore. But there are other photo options such as burst star lapse, night shot, interval and pure shot are still available and much easier access thanks to the quick menu feature. And if you're wondering, yes, it's still waterproof. So to achieve this wider angle, it has to be shot in 4K30 with flow state turned off. So you will be adding flow state in post. That's why it comes with that feature. So I'm gonna hand it off to Arwin here and we're gonna try again um, since the last footage didn't involve his uh, handlebars and it didn't look much like an FTV but more so like a uh, drone footage rather than an action cam. They've also been kind enough to include the invisible selfie stick when using the 360 lens which is also slightly improved from before using a friction based construction compared to the rotate to lock ones in the previous one. Looking at the footage on the big screen and I do want to start off with the 360 lens itself on the Insta360 app which is very intuitive as well on the desktop. I'm very surprised about how easily it is to just keyframe your shots and have them exported right away. It makes them very seamless. It's as good as using the invisible stick even though you're not, you're not mounting this on the invisible stick. Anything past zero degrees I guess just knows how to stitch things together very well. There's also auto framing available and a plugin for Premiere Pro. I'm not entirely sure if it, there's any for another software program, but I do want to touch as well on the concerns I had about low light, which to my surprise, it is kind of noisy. Flow state stabilization worked flawlessly. Now blowing it up on the big screen, it does kind of show a lot of noise and grain, more than I got to see on the phone. I think this kind of footage to be shared on social media and, and anything that can be watched on a phone is more than enough. But as as a big picture uh, type type scenario, like right now. It doesn't stack up to how it performed in daylight, which to its own respect is beautiful. It's very crisp and clear. My friend here riding on the motorbike um, through this very greenery, it captured a very great high dynamic range. It, it wasn't even shot in HDR and I can still see the mountains at the back. The footage uh, from the slow-mo, by the way, at 2.7K, I would most likely be very pleased to use 2.7K, but not so much on 1080p. Although it does have a good smooth uh, slow motion effect, it's a bit too pixelized for my taste. I was wondering what other accessories they do sell, and one of them being an extra battery. Do they sell an extra battery? And the answer to that is yes, they do sell an extra battery on the Insta360 store. If you intend on having extra batteries on a shoot and if you're always the type to have battery life anxiety then just buy another one there's also you know, other accessories like a sticky lens guard for the 360 lens that could be very useful and also the mic adapter as i mentioned earlier yeah having a mic adapter being just snapped onto this and connected by the usb-c and using a road mic or a lavalier mic, yeah, that, that would have been very, very helpful. More mounts would be something I would be very much interested in, like a hand mount bundle, a helmet, chin mount. In the end of the day, it just depends where you can mount this camera. And that's the variety that you get from um, using these cameras. Even though the software does help improve um, how a person gets creative using one, as for beginners and people who aren't familiar with cameras, um, 
people, most, most of the people that had the chance to use this camera in this video, none of them had any experience prior to this shoot, to this video. So none of them had any complaints about how, how to navigate using the menu. It was very easy and very uh, intuitive to use. So that's a big plus. Oh yeah, image quality app, uh, the Insta360 app and how this camera overall uh, holds up against other cameras. It's going in the right direction. Well, an action cam is an action cam, but I'm so glad to see more modularity being available to people like you and me now that something like this was completely impossible to do back in the day. I mean, I'm not sure if you remember how action cams used to be. They used to be very huge. I think the best depiction of that is somewhere in like this movie by Vin Diesel, uh, first Triple X movie. If you remember such a scene where he was diving down to record his stunts, part where there was a guy wearing a huge camera on his head. Well, that, that's just a whole different perspective, but I really enjoyed using the Insta360. There was no hiccups that I've, I've uh, faced compared to other action cams like overheating and stuff. Obviously, GoPros have been amazing at doing this. I mean, they were the pioneers in making action cams, but more I see, more I'm exposed to cameras doing this. I have been very open to how manufacturers like Insta360, DJI, and all the other action cams out there right now. Yeah, GoPro has a lot of competition going on. I'm glad other manufacturers are taking a different step by providing modularity. Obviously, this is like third, fourth generation already, and it's very well tuned from the first renditions. Not too much from the One R, if I'm completely honest. I think if you were to get one now, it can easily last you for 10 years or so if you're okay with sticking with just 4K. And I know 6K resolution is all there already for most people that watch content online. 4K is still gonna be sticking around and if you're okay with the uh, image quality coming out of this, the 4K is, is good enough for me. But yes, that is my overall review of the Insta360 ONE RS. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. And thanks for watching up to this end. See you guys, peace.